Hello guys, and welcome to episode 16 of my Total War Warhammer 2 playthrough, playing as Drum the Paunch, leading the Broken Axe to world domination. Today we're going to have to deal with the Vanaheimlings. They are standing by Castle Artois. We do have Gorkil, who could take him on, but I'm not sure about that, so we'll just leave it for the time being. Let's head over to Grom. Grom's, of course, going to wipe out this army of Safari that uh, moved towards us, so we'll go take them out. That'd be nice and handy. I love the way the balance power actually went up, even though I got rid of my <laughs> wah there. Uh, we will take the money, because no need for replenishment. And that's actually going to unlock the Regiment of Renown, the Biggin. That's cool. And the Arachnorok Queen. Very cool. Sort of bloodshed as well. Alright, uh, let's go take back Miss Nar. Might as well march in that direction. Okay, and then Grom can level up. Guess I'll just give him Deadly Blade for the time being. And we can now safely upgrade all our settlements. So yeah, we did lose the settlement previously to Safri, but taken out that army now so it should be pretty safe I think Avalon moved all the way up here yeah all good alright let's carry on with our turn so Gorebirds he can of course take the Tower of Lycian let's go ahead and do that we're going to sack it and we'll take it lovely level 2 and there is a wolf den there I don't think we need it though we'll just demolish it Alright, Spinny Rock Gut. Might as well level him up. Give him Iron Hard and the Goblin Big Boss. We'll give Scavenge. Our Orc Shaman can grab Magical Reserves. Okay. And then we'll take Angarial. Easy peasy. Sack that. Are making a mistake. And take that. The tribe's ready. Fantastic. Alright, so how close are we to finishing this quest? We need one more sack in order to finish off Blacktooth's quest. That's cool. That gives us 500 scrap. That's pretty awesome. Alright, Gorebirds. Gorebirds leveled up. So... Let's just level him up. Uh, I'll give him immortality. Congratulations. And the Night Goblin Shaman can have Arcane Conjure. Alright. Over to Spinny Rock Guard. He's leveled up again. Pick up Lightning Strike. That's going to be actually kind of handy for dealing with these two armies. And over to Gore Kill. So, since we did actually unlock the treasures of Renown, maybe we could use them in this army to help destroy Elif Goldbrunson. We do have quite a lot of regiments of Renown we can use. I'm probably going to save the Crimson Killers for when we make an Orc army. I guess probably be better if we put them in like a Grimgore army, but obviously we'd have to confederate Grimgore first. We could always put them in another army for the time being. But I kind of want to put this biggin, the biggin in here. What does this guy do? So he's anti-infantry, he's got a special ranged weapon. So he can, can he throw rocks like Cygors? That's pretty awesome if he can do that. He's got Spirit of Mork or Gork. Map wide plus four leadership. I mean he's got Rubble and Ruin. So bombardment, constant around target on self. So bombards the area around the unit. Extra armor, piercing damage, minus armor. Like a unit ability, and it looks like it levels up. Every time he takes damage, you can slap this to do damage to units around it. But it does damage allies as well. Okay. 
Oh, and to replenish ammo, it does damage to itself. <laughs> That's awesome. It like pulls rocks out of itself. <laughs> That's an awesome unit. Alright, I'm gonna drop... Oh, let's just merge some goblins and we'll pick up that unit. <laughs> That's really cool. And maybe we'll give that a go. Because if we can throw him into the middle of that an engagement with all of these marauder spearmen and marauders and then he uses that ability he's going to do a lot of damage so let's go ahead and attack oh they ran away <laughs> wait what okay well never mind then uh let's go ahead and march into castle artois and get some good old replenishment well that's unfortunate maybe they would have taken the attack if i didn't have that Regiment of Renown in there. I don't know. That's weird. Because I'm pretty sure that army's good enough to take on my trolls and stuff. Because all those Marauder Spearmen, they are anti-large. So they're going to do quite a lot of damage against my trolls. Uh, the Marauder Champions are really nice melee defense. The Marauder Champions are great weapons. will slice through my frontline infantry. I guess maybe like standard Marauders just aren't tiered that highly. I don't know. Well, Ratha Gutstabber is pretty much ready to go. <laughs> so, a nuts Nothing army there. Ready. And we do have the current cauldron dish. Got the dulled senses for trolls, don't we? Unbreakable. Wait, <laughs> this army's like fully unbreakable. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, giants are as well. Oh my, that's disgusting. That's going to make them so good. This army's not going to be very good against ranged forces, but that's why I have the pump wagons in here. We could probably use something that could climb walls as well. Thinking about it. Oh well. Uh, let's end the turn. Ooh, Tyrion's on his way to Lothan. That's not good. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter that much because we're going to head back to Lothan anyway. And there's nothing more up north for us. I'm not going to attack the Cold Plosia. Reichland Confederated Stirland. Start of the Reichland Confederations. Although, yeah, I guess it's kind of a good thing. It'll make Marienburg's job harder for the time being. Pretty sure... Koron just finished off some of the world walkers. That's good. Where are these guys going? Marching to the fort. Okay. Well, that wasn't so bad. And uh, we do have a uh, Rackneck Spider Claw available. He's a Goblin Great Shaman. And we have a hag merchant spotted at Bill Barley. Alright, well that's kind of annoying because it's in the middle of nowhere. Great and powerful war boss. Alright, so who's this dude then? I'm kind of tempted to replace this guy. But then again, we have him there on purpose because he has disciplined. So, Rachnik Spider Claw. Uh, maybe we just make a spider army. I mean... When normally killed in battle, this lord will be wounded instead. So he basically that just means that he's immortal. Um, that's cool. I mean, spider units includes the rock, the rock spiders, right? I assume. So yeah, we could maybe make like a spider army out of him. Uh, we need to give this guy some armor and stuff. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, Enchanted shield's probably better than these other two. Uh, we can give him the sort of bloodshed. It's fine. I'll give him the luck stone. Icon, I, iron curse icon. It's pretty nice. Let's have a look at these. Doesn't have any goblins. We could give him the sacking bonus. Definitely give him the backstabber. 
Uh, I'll give him a Scarecrow banner. And a banner of Swiftness. Banner of Swiftness would be pretty nice on some of the trolls, actually. Uh, the casualties captured post-battle, I'm not sure how useful that'll be. I guess it maybe in increases our income at the end of battles. Like, uh, like the amount of replenishment we get and all that kind of stuff. Based on the choices. We'll take the sacking and we'll take the raiding. We'll do that for now. Okay. As for Grom, uh, what does Grom have? He's got the Banner of Eternal Flame. I feel like I could take out these banners and we give him like the sacking settlement one would be pretty good actually for him. Anyway, let's go ahead and grab Miss Star. We will reclaim our I'm going to sack it to complete the mission. Wait, did that not complete the mission? Okay, never mind. It was already level 1 anyway, so it doesn't matter that much. Level up the good old River Troll Hag. We'll grab a Deadly Onslaught. Hey, over to Gorebirds. Alright, Gorebirds uh, needs to incept Tyrion. So, I'm feeling like an ambush if we can make one happen. I might as well just try and ambush in front of Lothurn. All right, then. I'll do it. Yeah, that'll do. Because then if we do get hit here, we'll have the reinforcements as well. We'll level up all of this. We'll level up the Tower of Lice in there. I don't know about leveling up Angerial already. The tribe's ready. But what we are going to do is attack Adelia now. Let's level up this boy. I will go for max out on Scavenge. And yeah, in we go. The plan is to lightning strike. Let's do that. And then we will attack the settlement afterwards. If I can take out Adelia herself, that would be great. There's quite a lot of archers. We do have Vanguard deployment type. Or <laughs> Van deployment type. I always say that. Vanguard deployment for my goblins. Not playing Steel Division, guys. Um, let's go ahead and jump these forwards. And uh, maybe I shouldn't have them at the front. We'll have these boys at the front. Uh, these ones can kind of be on the flanks a little bit. Actually, I might have this one in the middle, though. The reason I'm putting that one in the middle is because they have the Loons of Eight Peaks. That should do a lot of damage. Alright, this one can just charge forward with the rest of them. This I'm going to start over here. I'm going to put these onto guard. Start deployment. Start the battle. Charge forwards. And go, go, go. Alright, let's have all of these move forwards. This one can go for the Archmage. This one can start targeting range forces as well. These can come up on the flank. Start spinning around. Oh, that's doing a lot of damage. Beautiful. And we can fit a Gork. Go ahead and pop it in here. What? Uh, where's my dude? He needs to get on top of my arch mode. We've absolutely demolished them. <laughs> it's been pretty smooth so far. Do it. 
I'm just going to move these back. And we'll have this one continue on the Archmage. I think that's pretty much GG already. It's kind of crazy. Alright, let's turn off guard. And I'm going to have these target the ranged forces here. Kill them off. Make sure that my guy keeps sticking on the mage. I really want to kill off as many of these archers as possible. I'm not sure if they're going to be able to reinforce the next battle. Uh, they might be able to. Depends how far they retreat, I guess. Uh, let's give this guy a buff. Where you can finish off the Archmage. <laughs> Go on. Attack her, please. Okay, good. So we're not going to have to deal with any magic aside from like Altharian, but I'm not even sure if Altharian has magic. But that was good. We killed a lot of stuff. Unfortunately, some of the archers got away relatively healthy, but my army barely took any damage, so that was great. Those eight peak loonies did loads of damage at the start there. We're going to have to do that again. Okay. We'll take replenishment to max out our army. And yeah, she's going to be able to reinforce. That sucks. Alright, let's grab. Here we go. And we'll start attacking Asurian. Okay, cool. So it's just like an oversized uh, garrison force now, basically. That's reinforcing them. We'll have our reinforcements as well, so we'll just wait for our uh, WA to come in. Let's fight this on the battle map. This should be the end of Ivres. An Altharian. Great. You shall be but a footnote in history. <laughs> okay. So we could, in theory, have everything way forwards again and attack them, but we're not going to do that. Uh, we're just going to hold off. I'm actually going to keep my goblins, my night goblins in the center this time. Because I'm going to do what I did before with the fanatics. Okay, let's start the battle. Wait for our reinforcements. Be really nice to like drop foot of gork on these while they're all grouped up. Doesn't matter too much. Lord of goblins. Do these get many bonuses? Yeah, some bonuses. Let's have all of the orc archer boys on one side and then the goblin archers on the other. I'm going to put the orc archers on the right because I guess they're a little bit more resilient, I think. I guess my goblins have regeneration, so that makes them more resilient than anything else. But into position we get. My glorious force of night goblins and goblins. Fast, 
Excuse me. <laughs> Those two are just having a nice chat in the back there, comparing mounts. And this is my actual leader. <laughs> That's funny. Alright, uh, let's go ahead and whack these into a control group and just start moving forwards. As soon as my Goblin Rock Lobber gets in range, we should be able to stop and force them to attack us. Pretty sure they have some pretty chunky units, don't they? Yeah, they've got the Phoenix Guard here. We're going to have to deal with them. I think the Alvin units just look so badass. They really do. Look at this front line. <laughs> it's absolutely awesome. I mean, it is all like tier one units, but they enough look cool. This is a, this is what you could imagine an Alvin army looking like, with maybe like a bunch of archers behind, or maybe even in between. You know, like Full Lord of the Rings style. Uh, let's go ahead and stop the army. Alright, and these can just start firing. Uh, we'll engage those Phoenix Guard at the front. Because then anything that overshoots will hit stuff behind. Cool. I'm gonna... Do this on my flanks. Just so that we don't get flanked as easily ourselves. So all of these Phoenix Guard are on the left. So what I'm going to do is we're going to move over my oh, Shaman over here. And he can drop a... Drop a foot of Gork on them. Oh, good chances for decent hits here. Oh, there we go. That's a beautiful hit. Go into the spearman as well. Unfortunately, the rest of the volley was pretty lackluster. Still good hits coming through. I should probably try and target some of these ones a little bit. Uh, they do have those units on the flanks. Hmm. How long does this take? Five seconds? That was a good hit. <laughs> Very good hit. Oh, that phoenix though, coming across like that. Damn. Alright, time to run forwards and engage. Get the war going. Yeah, take out that flame spire, Phoenix, please. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Not bad. Uh, we're still firing into these. That's absolutely fine, honestly. Get that war going. We don't really have any good units to flank with, other than maybe the Snotlin pump wagons. But even them are, even they aren't that good. Try and hit these Phoenix Garden stuff. We can get the poison and that on them. That would be really good. Alright. Uh, here's probably a good place for this. Let's go ahead and smack that down there. Perfect. 
obliterated them on that side. Let's go ahead and target these Phoenix Guard. Get the war going again. Uh, we could target Eltharion. Alright, Phoenix Guard doing a runner. Start engaging their range forces. Meanwhile, we'll just keep bringing these over to the center. I didn't end up using this, did I? I guess we still can. Okay, that's good. Keep crushing them, boys. Keep crushing them. Let's engage Altari in there. Kill him off. Moving fast. Smash him. Moving fast. Looks like that's victory though. Yep, they are gone for the most part. A couple of my night goblins took a lot of damage. Great. We'll end it there. Job done. That was uh, yeah, pretty pretty reasonable, I think. Apart from the fact, obviously, those night goblins took a lot of damage. Um, my even my war didn't take that much damage. Just making sure I focus those Phoenix Guard was the most important part. I don't think we really had had a chance of losing that, especially with like some really good foot of gorks there as well. It was nice. Alright, let's uh do we sack it. Our brothers will I'm just gonna occupy it for now. The reason I'm gonna do that is because it has a unique building that we might get, so I don't wanna sack it. Uh, but that is it. That is short campaign victory with Grom. Lovely. All right. Well, <laughs> it's quite funny because in the Skaven campaign, it took us all the way till the fact we'd actually got world domination uh, before we completed the campaign <laughs> victory. <laughs> but in this case, uh, we're done in how many turns? 49 turns. That is a short campaign. I mean, it is a short campaign victory, but yeah, that's almost as short as Nakai's campaign. I remember Nakai's being pretty short. Yeah, there we go. We've taken pretty much all of Bretonia. We've taken out the Wood Elves. Now we're going to take Ulthuan. And of course, this is a world of domination, so we will be continuing. Don't you worry. Uh, 14 factions already destroyed. That's pretty nuts. We've killed 55 Lords. We did lose one lord ourselves, uh, but only in minor settlement battle defeats. Yeah, let's go ahead and continue the campaign. All right, so the Shrine of Syrian is ours, and Ivalesh is destroyed. I'm pretty sure we won the campaign because Ivalesh got destroyed. Uh, let's see, short campaign victory. Yeah, Ivalesh needs to die, and we got the enough from raiding apparently, and. We currently have nine of the big units, apparently. I guess we recruited a bunch of giants, didn't we? And we got the rogue idol in there. We got some goblin rock clubbers. Yeah. So somehow I managed to complete that. <laughs> so now we need to do the long campaign victory, which is complete all of the chapter objectives. Uh, we need to destroy Eertain, Reikland, and Kron. We're actually pretty close to doing that. Uh, 15 of those units. We need to maintain 18 provinces. We're currently on 15. And control 5 of the following settlements either di by direct ownership or through vassals and military allies. So we'll get there eventually. I mean, that doesn't seem too difficult either. We're not far off. Uh, Kothik can use growth. That's fine. And... Yeah, we did get the unique building. Lovely. The Flame of Assyrian. So this gives owning factions favoured corruption in all regions plus two. It's really, really nice. Really, really, really nice. 
and the extra Lord Recruit rank there early on in the campaign is fantastic. Uh, we don't need that, so we're getting rid of that. But that's going to help here, for example. So we're going to start dealing with corruption a bit, and that might allow us to get our obedience back here. If it gets too low, I can always remove the extort income, and they'll be happy again. All right. A spinny rot gut. We have lightning strike now. Kind of tempted to go towards renowned and feared, but before we do that, I think I'm just going to continue down this line. Could get the bonuses for goblin rock lovers and doom divers. I think in almost all armies, though, we want the big lads, though, right? Now, this guy is a great shaman. We could get his magic up, but we do have an orc shaman in there. Which we're generally using our magic with. So, I think we should probably just keep leveling him up through here. At rank 16, he does get an arachnorok spider. That'd be cool. Okay. And the goblin big boss. Give him get a fighter. Nice. So over to Gorkil Wolf Herder. Can we attack this army? We can. Alright, let's do it. Wipe them out. Damn, that was a seriously good auto resolve for us. <laughs> Might as well take it. It did, did take a lot of damage though, uh, but it doesn't really matter in the short term. We will just uh, move back this way, so we're in our own territory, and we'll go and attack Ron. That's what we're going to do next. I'll have my troll army come up here as well, because this guy is good to go. Cool. Could upgrade these so they have the physical resistance. But I'm not going to do that yet. Let's get the commandment in here. And that's pretty much everything done. Just going to check buildings. Upgrade all of these. Throw in the shaman's hut. And definitely the pile of shiny stuff. Good. Get the walls up at Trelinia. Stalia can max out that. Yeah, that was at Bilbali and then Musilion as well. We can just max out those horde buildings. Because we have so much money. It's actually just ridiculous. I mean, I could probably make another army at this point. Because of how fast we're expanding. How much does this army cost me to upkeep? 4,900. I guess if we didn't have the modern able, that would probably be like 9,000 maybe. Yeah, we'd probably be relatively even. So I'm not going to cheese it too much. I don't I don't have the mod necessarily to um, make things easier. It's just annoying when it gets into the late game. So we'll play this... As is for now. I won't recruit another army just yet. We'll be we'll be patient until we take a few more settlements and then I grab another one. Because yeah, it's basically the reason that I have the mod is for the, for the late game more more so that the campaigns don't get too drawn out. But this campaign has a good pace to it already, so we won't exploit it. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next turn. And all right. <laughs> That happened. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, they're going to take it back. What we'll do then is just take out Tyrion at the Tower of Lysen. I mean, it does. It's kind of a good thing because it does um, corner him. We only have to defeat him once. Sylvania declared war on Reichland and Caron declared war on Marienburg. Oh boy. Alright, Angarial is going to get attacked. That is fine. Corners that army. I don't know why they would do that. We're just going to come out of the throne of Assyrian and annihilate them. 
And the fact that they're putting all of their lords into their army is another thing. Because uh, <laughs> they're all going to die. I would just speed this up. Anything important? Not yet. I do kind of want to attack the beastmen at some point. Because I feel like the beastmen are the hardest to get the food off. Alright, time for Gorebirds to go and deal with Tyrion. Could auto resolve, it's a bit bit close though, a bit close for comfort. Let's go ahead and fight this on the battle map. I could probably start with my army in their face. And then just have the reinforcements run over here. So we'll give that a go. Uh, let's... Yeah, we'll have these just move forwards like this. And those can be in front. Uh, let's have the Goblin Wolf Riders move up on the flanks. And we can start the deployment, start the battle. And fire away, boys. <laughs> Should probably charge them. I'm gonna have these focus on the cavalry. Uh, we can skirmish with these. And we're gonna engage Tyrion with my lord, but not the shaman. Pop this over here. I don't think that's going to do too much damage. Okay, put these on guard. Uh, we'll make sure that these break off. Let's just keep chasing these down. Okay. I think it's pretty much GG. Yep. <laughs> Gobs a good one. <laughs> it's so fast. It's like such a fast battle when you can deploy in their face like that. That's ridiculous. I think the other thing that we could have done like right at the start is maybe had like my goblin great shaman drop a vortex spell in there um, straight off the bat but I don't think he was close enough to do so because he didn't have the vanguard deployment himself. That's okay that's going to be job done there we'll just go ahead and occupy that and we'll just pop the money in here I guess. Okay. Now with him dead, we can go back to Val's Anvil. It's kind of annoying because it kind of put us in an annoying spot there again. We're going to have to walk all the way back around. Uh, as for Grom, Grom's going to have to go and defend against these armies. So we'll head in this direction. We'll max out Deadly Blade. Cool. Right, spinny Rotgut can wipe out Angurial. I'll definitely bring the wire into that one. You are little more than Take it back. Thank you very much. And a new ingredient. I wish it told you which ingredient you got. The glowing shrooms. Minus 10% cooldown to all spells and all characters and extra Winds of Magic starting amount. We've also got the Dragon Tail, which is uh, Dragon Breath Ammunition. So projectiles will cause explosive damage. 
Interesting. I feel like that's going to friendly fire like crazy. <laughs> Maybe worth giving it a go. Very cool. Uh, we do have the fourth slot now, so we should probably make use of that. Alright, we'll level them up anyway. Uh, we'll keep going with the big lads, even though it doesn't have any big lads at the moment. And we'll give him Slippery. It's fine. Okay, let's head over to Gorkill Wolf Herder. So, I mean, we should probably take advantage of Kadon being attacked. So, I think what I'm going to do is we're going to head over to Linus first. And take that. Because... Actually, yeah, the other thing I want to check first, actually, is... Uh, Alliances. By the light of the yeah, they don't have any. Good. I'm going to take Leonis first because then we can just move up the coast and take it that way instead of having to go back on ourselves to take Leonis. I can just keep going up here. We can take uh, Leonis, Leanguil, and Coron, and then we can come across to the Isle of Wight, Skangata, etc. and just uh, wipe them all out in a big row. Cool. So that works. And then we got Rathug, Gutstabber, who can also head up here. Um, but honestly, I kind of also want to go and attack Skarsnick. I mean, what's their strength rank like? Strength rank 68. So, honestly, like, it wouldn't be far off them just joining a confederation. Yeah, we can get a confederation already. Do I want to do that though? They've taken Nuln. <laughs> the reason I say it won't be far off of Confederation, the reason I realise that is because uh, with Confederations and the Greenskins, I think not only do you not only do you um, well, have the ability to attack the enemy leader and take them over that way, but I think it, it, for the Greenskins in particular, they the higher strength rank you are than the other greenskins, the more chance you have to confederate. So, yeah, that's interesting. We might be able to do that. I might think about doing it, actually, uh, because, I mean, we can probably take Donbach as well. Non's a major settlement, so that'd be a pretty good foothold into the Empire lands. And it would also give us another army, which uh, would be good for attacking towards Reikland, but I don't know if we want to do that just yet. Definitely something to think about, but unfortunately, guys, it has been my time. I think I will probably do it, but we'll do it in the next episode, and then um, I'll have to, like, consolidate the forces here and, and sort this all out. But yeah, that's it. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Yeah,